Howdy, I am Tom Christensen of Neurochrome. In this video, I'll be taking a look at this HP 33120A function generator. I've owned this for probably seven, eight years now, and I bought it from a reputable vendor, but unfortunately, I forgot to check whether the encoder worked before my return period expired. So I've been dealing with this function gener generator that, as you can see, has a non-working encoder, and that's kind of annoying. So I found a replacement encoder for about $12, $13 on eBay, and normally I would say friends don't let, let friends buy parts on eBay, but, you know, I figured it would be worth a shot. So in this video, I'll walk you through how to replace the encoder. To take the generator apart, we need to remove the handle and these end caps. And that's actually fairly simple. You turn the handle to vertical and then you wrestle it for a bit, pulling out. And it is supposed to pop out like that, although it can be a little bit tricky. There we go. Ta-da, that was that. And these end caps, they just slide over that bevel there. And like that. Repeat for the other end. Ta-da. And that exposes a couple of uh, torque screws. I mean, as you can tell, one is hiding behind this calvoid. And then I'm guessing there's a screw underneath here as well. And in fact, let's remove those calvoid stickers here. Yep, there's a screw there. And then I'll pop the screws on the ends. The screws are all Torx T15. And once you remove the two from the back and the one at the bottom, you can pull this bezel out of the way. Ta-da! And now the cover should just slide right off. Of course, it's a little bit finicky. Oh, there we go. Ta-da! And we're in. Now, why is it rattling? Oh, wow. The power transformer is actually loose, so I'll fix that while I'm in there. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I should probably have noted earlier that, of course, when you break the calvoids and you open the function generator, you void the calibration. But I'm not touching anything that would require calibration, so I'm not overly worried about that. And, of course, the warranty is long expired on this thing. So that's all good. And the other thing I will point out is that it is really handy to have a service manual for this. And I suggest you go to Keysight's website and download it. And it's a free download. You might have to give them your email address, but that's about it. That came in handy when I tried to figure out how to remove this front panel. Because one part is really obvious. There's a Torx T15 right here. And after that, it's sort of like, hmm, okay. So back to the manual. And turns out, so first you have to remove the power switch connection here. And then you have to finagle that out of there. And I figured out that if you push towards the inside, you can make it come out. Uh, now, of course, it's stuck somewhere. Uh, let's see. There we go. Ta -da. And then these cables that connect to the front panel need to be disconnected. And the coax cables are pretty easy. They should just pop straight out. And here. Come on. Ta -da. And then this ribbon cable here. I'm supposed to be able to push down on the connector and it should come straight out. There we go. It's just a zip socket type deal. And then remove the Torx T15. So 
So, if you look inside the front panel, you'll find this latch dealy bob right here on the inside of the front panel. And you push that, and that allows you to move the metal side inward. So you fight with that for a little bit and pry out on the plastic. This is actually the HP way of doing it. Now it releases from one side and you should be able to work it off on the other side as well. And that's why you had to remove the power switch connection because that was in the way of this operation. Almost there. Ta-da! And uh, now I'll tighten up the transformer. And now with the front panel removed, I need to get the knob off the encoder so I can remove the circuit board that's on the back. And I bet that knob is just pressed on. I base that on two things. First off, this the replacement uh, encoder has this D-shaped shaft. And the two ways of attaching to a D-shaped shaft is either a press fit or a set screw. And I don't see a set screw anywhere on this knob. So I bet it's just a press fit, but I can't get a good grip to get it off. So I'm gonna gently work behind with a flat blade screwdriver and just maneuver it. And it's already loosening, so there we go. And I was able to do that without scratching the front panel. So life is good. Next up, I need to remove the circuit board so that I can get at the encoder. It looks like from these slots here that it should just slide. So I should be able to push it that way and then have it pop straight out. But I'm not really getting anywhere with that. So I'm wondering if there's a screw or something that attaches it. So I'm going to try and remove this plexiglass. And there are a couple of snaps that go through. One you can actually see inside here and the other one is hiding behind here. So I will try and negotiate, get, negotiate that a little bit. So it turns out there are actually three clips that hold this on. There's one in this far corner here, there's one behind this notch, and then there's one behind this notch. And by negotiating with a small flat blade screwdriver, I was able to get them all to release and now the glass comes out or glass, the plexiglass, at least that exposes a nut for the encoder. So I will try and remove that and see what then happens. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere because the hole for the encoder is actually this oval. So I bet the board will slide now. Ta-da! Now... Cool. And there you have it. Now all I need to do is desolder this encoder and pop the new one in and hopefully we're good to go. That almost seemed too easy. And sure enough, it's still stuck. But I got enough solder out of the holes that uh, I should be able to finagle it here. Oh, there we go. Heat it up a little on each side and wrestle it out of there. 
Ta-da! That was the first two, the two mechanical support pins. And then, uh, let's see, most of the pins are actually loose here. It's just the last one, I think. Ta-da! Sweet! Now all I need to do is to clean up the flux and any solder residue and then I'm ready to solder in the new encoder. So hopefully this one fits. Oh yeah, perfect. Ta-da. Should get the mounting hardware off before I forget. Like that. And then just solder it in. So even though this is RMA flux in this solder, I should probably clean it off. So I'll do that. And there you have it. Shiny new encoder. Life is good. All that's left to do now is to clean up the display. You know, just wipe off fingerprints and whatever I smeared on there while I was doing the encoder replacement. Same with the front plexiglass. And then put everything um, together again. And that should go pretty easily. Just one thing. Make sure you get the coax cables connected correctly. The outputs are marked uh, right next to the connector on the main board. So that should go pretty easy. And there you have it. Much better. I like, I like very much. So there was a couple of tricks when it comes to uh, the reassembly. Uh, one is that the encoder has this little dimple on it. That's a key for locking it into a front panel. And that actually sits in a groove in the plastic inside the front panel. So I bet if you push the encoder and then slide the circuit board, it'll pop right off. So that was one trick and uh, your reward for watching until the end. The other trick is that inside the front panel right here by the uh, outputs, there's a little uh, notch that the uh, tongue of the circuit board on the bottom fits into. So when you put the front panel off, just make sure those align. But the rest came together pretty easily. So there you have it. You know, if I wasn't recording the video for it, I bet I could do this inside of an hour. And you know, that's not a bad way to spend an afternoon. Hey, thank you for watching. And if you like the video, click like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And also, if you found the video informative or helpful, make sure to mention it in the comments. And if you have suggestions on how I can improve these videos or maybe topics for future videos, drop them in the comments as well. Um, I don't always get back to responding right away, but I do read those comments. So keep them coming and thank you very much. Have a great day.